Welcome, family, to another episode of God's Glory in History. I am your host, MC Enemy, but as always, it's not about me. It is about the Word of God and His truth on this channel. Welcome to Fellowship. This episode is scheduled to be aired Friday, September 8th, 2023. Yah is looking for people to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And on this channel, we focus on His truth and we let His truth, which is the truth, set you free. And for those of you who say it doesn't matter what Christ looks like, and this is just one of the applications, many applications of this scripture, I got do have a scripture for you. You want to hear it? Here you go. 1611 King James Bible, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10 through 12. It is written, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, Yah shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Don't forget the prayer of Paul to the Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16 through 21. If you read it, it will bless you with an understanding of God's word and his love for you. If you haven't done so yet or you are new to the channel, most important thing with us is that you download at least two Bible apps. And we ask that you make one of those Bible apps, the 1611 King James Bible with the Apocrypha. There are additional books there that you cannot get in the standard 66 book version. And you wouldn't buy a book knowing that there are pages and chapters missing, now would you? All right, and the reason why we say at least two downloads right in the middle of your screen, the facts of every case must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, but more importantly to me is that you share this with others. You never know who you may be putting on the path to Christ. In case you missed it, last week, episode 171, we talked about the Mandinka tribe, one of God's hidden ones. Go check it out. It will bless you. But today, we're going to get right into it. Episode 172, Messiah Hates This. So you can kind of see the tie-in with the music. Thin line between love and hate. Messiah Hates This. Let's get to work. All right. Um, coming up shortly, I believe it's next week, is the Feast of Trumpets. Um. There are a group of people that call it, call it something else, but we, we're going to stick with what the Bible calls it. You know, I'm, I'm kind of old school that way in, in some respects. Is mama call him Clay? I'm going to call him Clay. So September 15th, that evening at sundown, is the Feast of Trumpets. So it's a time for you to re, uh, repent and encourage reflection. It's also called by certain people Yom Teruah or Torah Teruah. It says it's the biblical name for this holy day, and it means a massive shout by a crowd or the blowing of a horn. So it's characterized by the horn, the horn being blown, the horn of a ram. So today's theme is repentance. 
So we're going to look at one scripture, just break it down a little bit. I said, I don't plan on being with you long today. So 1611 King James Bible, Revelation chapter 2, verse 12 through 17. It is written, and this is all Messiah speaking. It is written, and to the angel of the church of Pergamos, write, these things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit, Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receive it. All right, so that was a lot in that in that one little script, those few scriptures, four or five scriptures, it was verses, it was a lot in there to digest. So let's look inside this red circle, this red outline here, was the Roman Empire at the height of its power. This is before they broke it into an east and a west. And if you look over there where it says Asia Minor, which is today Turkey, this is where the seven churches that are talked about in Revelation were established. And this particular letter we talked about was written to the church in Pergamum. All right, so you can see it right there on your screen. And then here is the capitals when they, after the Roman Empire broke into an east and west, they had two capitals. They have the eastern capital was Rome, or excuse me, the western capital was Rome in Italy. So like midway there on in the middle of the boot. And then the capital of the eastern empire was Constantinople, which is in Turkey or Asia Minor back in those days. And it's now called Istanbul. So Istanbul also given the nickname, the city on seven hills. And the only reason I can see that there was called the city on seven hills is because Rome actually was a city on seven hills and it's known as a city on seven hills. I'm sorry. So because this was phone listening to me, right? Anyway, so the, uh, the Eastern Empire, Constantinople, was given that nickname because it was the Eastern capital of the Roman Empire. So what is Pergamon or the altar of Pergamon? You probably never heard of that. But if you look at that scripture 13 in Revelation chapter 2, it says, I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. Well, this is where Satan's seat is. It's the altar of Pergamum. It's the seat of Satan, which the Apostle John mentioned in his letter to the church in Pergamum. 
So we're going to get a better picture of it coming up here. There's a better picture of it. It's a it's a monumental uh, construction built uh, during the reign of the ancient Greek king Eumenes II in the first half of the second century BC. So it looks like looks like a very large library, but it does kind of look like resemble a seat. And if you look at the the front portions on the left and on the right, you can't really see them too well, but you can always go Google it. And you can see that these carvings, they are various Greek gods carved on each side of that seat or that altar, as they call it. Because the Greeks were pagan. You know, and, and I guess their main god was Zeus. And so this is why it was called the seat of Satan. Pagan worship. It was also known as the altar of Zeus. So here is the map on the left. Some of the travels of Paul and you can see some of the places that he went he went to Rome he went to uh, Thessalonica he went to Nicopolis he, he uh, went to Ephesus these various places and Nicopolis is, is one of those places that he went and that is in Greece and I'm going to talk about that in a minute about the Greeks. So before we get there, um, it also went on to talk about that verse 13 also went on to talk about um, Antipas. It says, um, I know that works where thou dwellest even in Satan's seat is and thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith. Even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. So we already know where Satan dwelleth and his Satan seat was. And Antipas was there. So who was Antipas? So he was a, a gentleman who was approached by the priest of Asclepius who promised him wealth and safety if he would only stop speaking a particular word, which is the word or the gospel of Christ. And he refused. He rejected other the other words and clung to God's promises. And because of that, he was killed. Now, how he was killed um, was rumored to be that he was placed inside of a brazen bull because he cast out demons, which the people of that local population still worship. So we talked about the Nicolaitan nations, or that scripture talked about it, because it went on in, script, in verse 15 and says, thou hast, or well, hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. So you should be saying, well, what is, who are the Nicolaitans and what is their doctrine? Well, th I just told you they were Greek. That's what Nicolaitan was, Nicolaitia was in Greece. And they led lives of unrestrained indulgence. The character of these men is very plainly pointed out in the Apocalypse of John when they are represented as teaching that it is a matter of indifference to pack, practice uh, adultery and to eat things sacrificed as idols. So you should be able to relate that to the doctrine of Balaam, which it also talked about where they taught 
the Israelites in those days to eat things that were sacrificed to idols and to commit fornication with the strange women. So what Balaam was to the Israelites, the Nicolaitans are to the church of Pergamos. In plain English, the Greeks were freaks. You know what I'm saying? Come on now, you know. Don't act like you don't know. Sixteen eleven King James Bible Numbers chapter fourteen verses eighteen through twenty four. It is written, Yah is long suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people according to according unto the greatness of thy mercy, and as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. And Yah said, I have pardoned according to thy word. He's talking to Moses. And Moses was the one who was petitioning Yah. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of Yah. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provo provoked me to see it. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit within him and hath followed me fully. Him will I bring into the land whereinto he went and his seed shall possess it. So in honor of, of the 10 times that the Israelites tried Yah, we're going to talk about 10 lessons that we just learned from that, those simple few scriptures from John's letter to Pergamos, the church of Pergamos. And just to keep time, I'm just going to read right through them. I, I didn't separate them like I normally do. So number one, Messiah sees what you do. And you can go back and, and read those scriptures and have that your Bible with you right now and just follow along with me. It's uh, Revelation chapter 2, verse 12 through 17, I believe. All right. So Messiah, Messiah sees what you do. He knows you live in the devil's den. He knows who loves him, literally, to death. He knows if you keep company with fornicators. He knows if you eat foods sacrificed to idols. Messiah knows corrupt company corrupts. He hates the do-as-you-will lifestyle. Living as you want will bring judgment quickly. He that is called will understand. He that answers his call will be rewarded. Now, shortly after the Feast of Trumpets, which I mentioned at the beginning, a little bit later on and in, in towards the end of this month, we have the Feast of Tabernacles. So that's going to begin uh, the evening of Friday, September 29th, and run through to Friday, October 6th of 2023. So it is a Yahudi holiday in the fall that celebrates the gather, gathering of the harvest as well as the Israelite exodus from Egypt. Certain people also call it the Sukkot. And during this time, they try to sit, uh, spend time in tents. 
because that's what the children of Israel did when they left Israel. They built tents and they stayed in tents as they were on their journeys, on their travels. That's the Feast of Tabernacles. 1611 King James Bible, 1st Esdras, chapter 5, verse 47 through 53. It is written, but when the seventh month was at hand. So that's that's this month. Because remember, the Israelite calendar or God's calendar is not the same as the calendar that we follow today, which is the Gregorian calendar. So. When the seventh month was at hand, and when the children of Israel were every man in his own place, they came all together with one consent into the open place of the first gate, which is toward the east. Then stood up Jesus, the son of Josedek, and his brethren, the priest, and Zerubbabel, the son of Salafiel, and his brother, and made ready the altar of Yah of Israel to offer burnt sacrifices upon it, according to according as it is expressly commanded in the book of Moses, the man of Yah. And there were gathered unto them out of the other nations of the land, and they erected the altar upon his own place, because all the nations of the land were at enmity with them and oppressed them and they offered sacrifices according to the time and burnt offerings to Yah both morning and evening also they held the feast of tabernacles as it is commanded in the law and offered sacrifices daily as was meat and after that the continual oblations and the sacrifice of the Sabbath and of the new moons and of all holy feasts and all that they had made any vow to Yah began to offer sacrifices to Yah from the first day of the seventh month, although the temple of Yah was not yet built. So I just gave you that little background about the Feast of Tabernacles. And they held sacrifices, but we don't sacrifice in that manner these days. The sacrifice that we offer now is told to us in 1611 King James Bible, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, and then verse 15 and 16. It is written, Yahshua HaMashiach, the same yesterday and today and forever. By him. Therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to Yah continually. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, Yah is well pleased. So family, you've already been forgiven. All you need to do is A, B, C. Accept the Messiah as your personal Savior. Believe he died for your sins and confess it with your mouth. Again, Messiah said it best in Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So playtime's over. Pause the video. If, you, if you're not right, get right right now. Recite this simple prayer. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. You got to get in where you fit in. Playtime is over. You can play if you want to. If you have recited this prayer with sincerity and repentance in your heart, let me be the first to welcome you to the family. Now, if you accept the Messiah today, just do us a simple favor and drop a comment that says, I'm in. And that way we can all celebrate with, for your arrival with the angels for your arrival. Now, on this channel, we don't make orphans. Simple three step process to further your walk.
Step number one is to read your Bible daily. If you don't know how to, got you covered. Episode 62 on this channel entitled How to Read the Bible will guide you. Step number two is to find a Bible-based place to grow. This has to be a place that is not stuck in the doctrines of men. And then step number three, to pray without ceasing. It means bring all your cares and concerns to the Father, the Most High Yah. And then after you've done all three of those things, rinse and repeat. All right, the various channels you can catch me on. Remember, like, comment. Again, more importantly to me, subscribe. Email address right there if you want to drop a line in the comments or send me an email. I want to thank you, brothers and sisters, for allowing me to grow in this knowledge with these studies. And in turn, I pray you grow in faith. Thanks for watching. As always, guys, I love you. Worship the Father. Praise the Son. And accept the Holy Spirit. May our Lord and Savior grant you his peace that surpasses all understanding. May it rest, rule, and abide with you. Now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen. You keep on hurting her, she keeps being quiet. She might be holding something inside. Here I am laying in the hospital, bandaged from feet to head. She, I'm in a state of shock, baby. Just that much. From being dead, yeah. I didn't think my woman could do something like this to me. I didn't think she had some nerves. So here I am. I guess I should speak louder. Than between love and hate, it's a thing to love between love and hate. Oh, 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 oh,